Welcome back, everybody. This is Drew Nonstar, and you're watching Kerbal Space Program Mini Shuttles Mini Series, or just Shuttle Mini Series. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now that I'm doing post commentary on this video, which is weird uh, to say the least. I accidentally uh, forgot to turn the mic on when I recorded this whole shebang shebang. So I'm doing it all in post commentary. Not that big of a deal. We'll uh, we'll we'll figure it out as we go, right? So uh, I don't know if you saw right there. Uh, I named the station Jeb and Val Memorial Station. You know, it's the same station we launched last time. Got the life support in there. You know, um, yeah. Anyway, so showing you that it's all there, and I forget what I was saying, but I was saying something. So we're gonna get right into it. Uh, it's gonna be uh, well. I don't want it to be a long episode. Um, so I have everything kind of sped up a little bit. We needed to recruit some no more victims, uh, or volunteers, I should say, um, because Jeb and Val are now gone. We need pilots. And then of course we need to, uh, send some other scientists and engineers and up stuff up there. So I'm going for the, the least stupid, uh, you know, stupidity is the thing I'm looking at most right here. Courageousness. That's great. Stupidity. Not so great. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and launch STS-2 here. Uh, it's going to load up and on this one we have a science module, some fuel and a docking adapter for the shuttle. So the uh, shuttle can dock up with the station. As it stands, it won't be able to reach the, uh, the docking ports that I have set up just because it's kind of recessed inside of the, uh, the cargo bay here. So, you know, standard launch profile, I, I you know, throttle down the thrust on that uh, top engine of the shuttle. Um, just to get off the pad and then I, I scroll it up here now we're gonna go 10 times normal speed just because you guys have seen this launch already and there's no point in wasting all that time I think this thing takes like five minutes <laughs> no joke just to just to get up out of the atmosphere and then after that it's you know another you know five five or so minutes of just getting the orbit set so you don't want to see all that every single time so I got it speeding through it real quick um, you know killing the engines there because the thrust get, thrust is getting hard and uh, as you see it's dipping down a little bit now I'm just kind of playing with that thrust moving the the weight as far forward as possible and oh, almost went over so getting all that weight forward and uh, there you go getting rid of those tanks and if you look at my Apple apps this year it's getting up there it's almost 200 I don't know if you saw the map before I launched but uh, the station was pretty much right overhead just just past the Space Center so I decided to go for it and just put it in a, in a lower orbit so this, at this point, I realized, hey, why, why is my RCS not working? Oh, that's right. I accidentally left it on for a portion of that launch and wasted it all. So I am out of RCS fuel, no monopropellant whatsoever. Going to have to get some once I get to the station because I do want to dock up with that station. So here we are. I'm looking to see, okay, if I bring my, my uh, Apple Apsis up to 300 at that point, that's pretty darn close. So I kind of messed with the maneuver note a little bit and I couldn't have got a better, you know, intersect here if I, if I planned it. Um, you know, I just went right then and there. It was, that's where the station was. And I said, all right, well, it's good enough. I'll go. And it ended up being really, really good. So it worked out real nice. So here we are fast forwarding again, you know, through the whole maneuver, maneuver node, not very much thrust out of those little tiny, uh, engines in the back. So open up the uh, cargo bay. You can see the cargo again on the inside or on the dark side. I, I, uh, I, I paid special attention to, to make sure that we did this on the day side, uh, at least for most of it. So here we are. Got the maneuver m node, or sorry, the, uh, the intersect. Moving up to the intersect and just adjusting, trying to get a closer approach, um, which ended up pushing it back further during the day, but oh well, you know. So we get there, I actually flew past the station because I wasn't paying attention. I was talking about something, I have no idea. So yeah, anyways, so here we are at the station. I'm gonna kill my velocity and uh, start start assembling the station, the fun part, right? So we got, got the station up, uh, shuttle up here. So I, I went ahead and I undocked that so I could start bringing the tug over and uh, you know connecting it. Oh yeah, right here, I, what I was doing is so that's the environmental stuff. That's the life support and batteries. And I'm going to want to put that on the end of the station. So I'm just getting it out of the way for now. The tug is also going to be at the end of the station as well. 
um, just one you know one module after that one so I can you know undock it and use it if I need to so just getting that out of the way in anticipation for this um, I don't know if you saw the docking adapter fly back into the the cargo bay there it could have been bad <laughs> I, I did some time acceleration and it wasn't out of there now I was a dummy and I didn't open up the um, that docking shield which I need to because that's the outer yeah, that's what's going to be on the outside. It's closed when it's not being used. So you have to get one of these new recruits into the um, into the uh, cargo hold here and kind of push it out and also uh, open it up. I didn't remember or not if a, if a Kerbal could do this. Maybe only engineers can do it, and I just lucked out and picked an engineer. But there we go. We got it open. I'm getting him back in the shuttle. So now that that's done, I, oh, I almost flew right past it there. And I'm scraping paint. Am I scraping paint? Almost scraping paint. So flipping it around. Make sure I'm pointing the right direction. So I'm going to be docking up with the shielded side because that's the side I want to leave facing outwards from the station. So if you notice on this uh, little tug that I got made, that I, well, that I made, you have the small docking port in the middle and the, uh, the large one on the outside. I kind of use the offset tool and... Uh, made sure it worked before I sent it up because I'd never done this before and it actually it works out pretty awesome um, I must say being able to dock to any of those two sizes is very useful uh, makes it you know and it looks cool I mean this this thing looks this thing looks legit like it belongs in space so I dig it anyways coming back over to the uh, what's now just the hab part of the space station the Jeb and Val Memorial Station should come up with like a catchy acronym or something. Javams Jams Station. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, coming in, showing you my awesome docking skills. No, no docking alignment mod or anything like that. Just years of playing this game and getting the hang of it. If you look at the uh, the nav ball, you could actually you know learn a lot on on how to dock if you don't know how. Uh, a lot of people on the forums, on, on Reddit at least, are always complaining that docking's hard and, you know, or at least they used to. I, I don't know. I don't really check that forum that often. But here we are. We're, we're attached. Um, yep. That was me sticking out of there for a second. All right. Uh, anyways, I digress. So showing you the awesome view. Now, no RCS and no action. I forgot to put an action group to do that. I was going to do that for next time, but... I forgot, so to have this cool little view of the payload leaving, I'm going to have to just pitch the ship. So that's what I do. I start pitching the ship, and there you go. It's not exactly coming out. Just one side's coming out, but it works, and I can kind of push the ship back down, and there you go. It's kind of like I just pushed it out. Now, of course, the, the shuttle's drifting past the station now. But that's not a big deal. I won't get too far away. So picking the correct side of the the new module, the science module that has some fuel as well. Gasoline powered experiments, maybe. Who knows? Uh, gonna grab that. Kind of make sure I grab the right side. I want the fuel side facing down and the science portion facing up. So I'm gonna come to the other side and dock with that. Come on around here. Could have just changed which, you know, it's omnidirectional. I could just control from another side, but I just, I guess I decided to flip it around that time. Coming up the dock, checking my monopropellant, sitting, I've only used 154 units so far, so that's, so far so good. I've already got one thing docked and got to put this piece on, reattach the uh, life support and then dock up with the shuttle so the shuttle could use the monopropellant that I have um, in this tug to dock up with the station and that's where our, I'll, I'll call the episode uh, time wise now if I was doing this live I wouldn't know how long it's gonna take but since again the beauties of post-production I know exactly when this video ends and that's when it ends um, so we won't be seeing the shuttle returning to Kerbin on this episode Next episode, though, we get to start with it coming in. So that's, you know, set the pace of the episode right off the bat. Anyways, getting everything aligned. Um, a trick I like to do is I, I like to point things at north and south, which is the 
the 360 or 0 vector and 180 for south. So the station had drifted, so I'm just adjusting that. I'd forgot to put SAS on to keep it in place. So once I got them uh, you know, aligned, I know exactly which way the piece is facing so I can orient myself to that direction and then translate with the RCS. Now on this little dock right here, it's actually not that easy of a dock because I, did, I never put RCS thrusters on the science module. So all the thrust is on one end of this long cigar shaped piece so every time I you know I change my direction that's not a big deal because it'll change it pretty well but if I try to translate and face a certain direction like I am right now it uh you know it wants to rotate the whole thing you know, imagine me you know taking a stick and you know putting one end on the ground and then on the other end trying to push the whole stick and keep it you know pointed straight up and down while well, the sticks touching the ground is going to stay there the top's going to move. It's kind of the same thing here. Now, there's no thrust down there. So, anyways, I, I got it docked up. Everything looks good uh, and aligned, to trying to get that uh, that docking port to face the same direction as the shuttle docking ports uh, because that's the design. Uh, anyway, so we have two more launches after this one um, to get the solar arrays up here. And then after that, I might extend the miniseries and, I don't know, make my version... Uh, of Hubble or something. I don't know. Put something in orbit that looks cool. We do have the Asteroid Day camera, so I might toss that guy in there and, and uh, put something around it. Makes it look like Hubble. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, Got to do some reading. I don't even know what orbit uh, Hubble is. If it's you know polar or if it's got a certain degree, you know, inclination or I don't know. Well, I'll I'll read up on that. Try to do it. You know, cool. Actually, you know, I should have done this with the space station to be honest with you, but it's just easier to put it in equatorial orbit. You know, maybe next time I do something, I'll do it in a more realistic orbit. But you know, I, I launch from the equator, so you know, it's not as real. I can't really be any more realistic without you know installing RSS or something, uh, real solar system with uh, realism overhaul, which is pretty nuts. The, the only thing that's really holding me back from that is. I've seen seen what it looks like, and it it looks. I mean, it's yes, it's realistic, but the textures don't look as cool as this. You know, they don't look as realistic. Ironically enough, they look. You know, the when you look at the space center, it doesn't look. The grass doesn't look as the same. It looks like a bright lime green. It doesn't. I don't know. It for something that's supposed to be realistic, it makes the game look more gamey to me, like more like a game. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, this all took too long. It's nighttime now. But I can see what I'm doing. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing as well. Putting the last little bit here, the life support module, um, back on the end of the station before I rendezvous the tug with the shuttle to basically steal some monopropellant and dock up with the station. I'm going to leave the tug inside the shuttle till next episode. I'll probably start off by you know, putting it back on the station and then doing my deorbit burn. Um, so last time I definitely overshot. I think I put it somewhere around like 12 kilometers in the middle of the ocean between the space center and the next continent over to the east. So I think I'm going to put it, I don't know, maybe put 12 or 10 kilometers right on top of the space center see how that goes. I have some pretty good glide in this shuttle so long as I don't pitch back too hard and blow it up while I'm going like Mach 3 which is what happened last time. Um, so yeah we'll see how that goes. It'll be fun. Probably gonna do it right now but I won't have it ready for a while. <laughs> it takes a while to edit these videos and get everything ready. Um, do have that snazzy intro though. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'm still getting used to doing this stuff. This is, you know, this is all new to me. So, I'm trying to trying to do it right. Episode two. Well, actually, I te technically, I guess this is like my fourth episode because I did that two episodes two years or a year ago that I ended up, you know, not following through. the The, the, the new version of the game came out and the it wasn't looking good. I, I didn't like the way it was coming out. And uh, yeah, that's that. I'm giving it another shot here. This is, you know, the actual full release of the game and 
Yeah, I got better mods going on here, I think. I'm not using... Yeah, I'm not using parts mods. I'm not against parts mods or anything, but... You know. So, I, I, if I recall, I flew through the shuttle, and I, I guess I wasn't paying attention. I, I kind of fast-forwarded and went right through it. So, yeah, it was a good thing I was time accelerating, because I think I would have blown it up. But, I, you know, I didn't blow it up, so that's good. So here I am, I'm just going to go ahead and orient to the north again, just like I was talking about earlier. So, you know, if I know that docking port's facing north, and the front of my ship, the docking port is facing south, they're facing in the same direction. So then I could just translate into the cargo bay, and that's it. Now, this... This dock was kind of tricky just because um, I could see where I'm going on the screen, like just by looking at you know the shuttle and, and my uh, my tug. But if you look at the nav ball, you don't actually see my velocity vectors because they're they're off off screen basically. They're on the other side of that ball or you know on you know basically on the uh, below the horizon line on there. So not until I get pretty close um, and slow myself down that I end up actually seeing it. Once I see it, it makes it it makes it makes so much easier. So I know I'm getting closer. There it is, boom, it's on the, uh, on the ball. So once it's on the ball, I know exactly where it is and things become way easier. So just coming in nice and easy. I think I end up scraping the bottom of the uh, cargo bay just a little bit in a second here. You'll see the whole thing kind of twist, kind of contort, or maybe not, I don't know. Well, anyways, there we go. Now we're docked. So now the shuttle has fuel, but I'm 1.4 kilometers away. So I, for some reason, I was looking at the nav ball and I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the right control from here, uh, piece on the shuttle. So once I finally got myself aligned, I just used my shuttle uh, engines because I have plenty of fuel. I'm not really worried about fuel, um, but that mono propellant's gotta last me for two more. Two more launches and, and docks here, so I want to make sure I save as much of that as possible. So I use the shuttle fuel, just kind of burn myself towards the station, and then prepare to arrest my velocity when I get a lot closer. Really shouldn't be burning my engines towards the station, but the game hasn't <laughs> created any kind of consequences for that just yet, so I'm, I'm good, and it just it works. <laughs> I'm not going to... I'm not going to pretend like uh, I'm going to destroy the station or anything. I'm just going to do what I can. So here we are. We're at the station. Now I'm going to, uh, again, that alignment thing, I'm going to point that north, and then I'm also going to twist it um, so the shuttle docking adapter is facing the shuttle. Um, do an extra evolution there for fun, I guess. Station's like, I'm a little ballerina. Look at me. All right, so facing the shuttle. And I don't think I put SAS on, but I guess it, it stays. Uh, now I'm going to face the shuttle to the north. There we go. And I'm going to twist it. Now, some of you are probably yelling at the screen right now. Why don't you just control from here on the docking port in the cargo bay? Well, it would be great if I could do that. I really wish I could. I mean, in a big way, I really wish I could. Problem being is that for some reason... It, the game doesn't like that. I do that, and even though, you know, I'm pointed at what it says I'm pointing at, it's got, you know, like the crew cabin pointed at that part instead. Like, I don't know if I'm exp explaining it correctly. It doesn't work. <laughs> I'll be point. I'll be pointed right at that docking port with that docking port, and the target indicator will be completely somewhere else on the nav ball. Like I'm not pointed at it, which is I don't know. It's been like that for many versions for me. I don't know if it's just a thing. I'm on a Mac. Maybe it's a Mac thing. I don't know. I probably should have reported it as a bug a long time ago. I figured, you know, someone else would have reported it. Or maybe it's a known issue. I don't know. It's it, it's not even mods too. Um, because I've done this without mods and I still get that same issue. It's weird. It's It, it just doesn't like like it when something's at 90 degrees, I guess, to another piece on the ship that could you could control from or something. It's weird. Like, I would love to just click that docking port right now and to control from here because then it would be a super simple dock. But if I did that, the target indicator would be, I don't know, like somewhere way off. 
and I botched this first attempt. Again, I'm doing this on hard mode because I can't use that stuff. But, yeah. Anyways. Coming in for the second try. Looks like we're coming in. Coming in. This is painful to watch. Come on. You can get that. There we go. Magnets. How do they work, right? <laughs> They're awesome. Gotta love magnets. And there's our completed science module. Uh, just two more launches to go. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next episode.